Hello everybody and welcome to the third week of my weekly devlog series in which I share the progress on Project Younger Dryas, a turn-based strategy game about restarting civilization after a world-ending cataclysm. This week I primarily tested out the game's mechanic as they were last week and thought about how I wanted the hunter-gatherer tribes and colonies to behave and what map type would be the best for this kind of game. What I observed was that it was fun to follow hunter gatherers and teach them technologies and gain favor with them. Picking spots for them to settle was also fun. And since I implemented wild animals chasing these hunter gatherers, it was also fun to lead them to a settlement point while avoiding contact with these wild animals. This, however, got me thinking about one of the most important elements of a strategy game, the map. In my last video, I talked about games being fun because they gave interesting choices to the player and allowed them to make interesting decisions. Just like in real life, the environment in video games influences the decisions that the player makes by providing the constraints that make the player engage in such decision-making processes. Strategy games are designed so that every so often during the gameplay, the player is provided with micro puzzles. Level design, or in our case, the generation of the map, is an important tool which can provide the necessary constraints and create these micro puzzles, which the player can engage with and solve using the game's mechanics. Maps come in a variety of flavors. One of these is a regular free movement map in which movable units are not constrained to grid systems and appear to move in a very analog way. The advantage of this style of map is that there is more freedom for the player to move and place units and buildings wherever they please. However, it is not certain if that amount of freedom necessarily increases the quality of gameplay since constraints are often what spur us to come up with creative solutions for problems. And since strategy games are essentially lots of mini problems, maybe not having constraints on movement and unit or building placement isn't the best design tactic. Though I'm sure that there are a bunch of games out there which deal with this issue without any problem. Personally, I enjoy another variant of maps in strategy games, a tile-based map. In this variant, the map is organized into a grid which are composed of tiles to which the movement and quite often the building and unit placement is constrained. The advantage of this is that it makes the map more readable for the player by solving the problem of the player having to rely on their own judgment of distance which could be warped by awkward or odd camera angles skewing the camera's perspective and as a result prohibiting them from making decisions based on accurate information. It is much more satisfying to make decisions knowing that they are based on accurate information and leaving the risk of making the wrong decision on the uncertainty of your own problem solving skill or your opponent's foresight than to realize that you made the wrong decision because the information provided was inaccurate and erroneous. As a new player, it is harder to judge distances based on seemingly arbitrary numbers. For example, if I see a unit's movement speed is 3, then as a new player, that doesn't mean much to me until I get a sense for the game's environment and create a mental model for the judgment of units of measurement in this particular game world. However, in a tile-based system, when a new player sees that a unit's movement speed is 3, then they can much more easily deduce that the unit can probably move 3 tiles in its turn. And 3 tiles is exponentially easier to see in the game world than 3 arbitrary units. The other way in which maps can differ from each other is in their mode of creation. Environments are often created by an environment artist by hand and this provides a level of quality that other modes of creation can only hope to achieve. Every detail is put down into the world painstakingly with a lot of consideration and deliberation. However, the downside of this is that there's only so much content that you can produce by hand, 
before you run out of budget or time or both. In games that require a high level of replayability, such as strategy games, this isn't the most optimal strategy to design and create maps. This is where map generation comes in, and more specifically, I am referring to procedural generation. Procedurally generated has become a buzzword in the games industry, but for good reason. It has the power of creating a nearly infinite amount of content, and it achieves this by following rules and a structure laid out by a designer. These rules can range from broad overarching statements to fine, nuanced and detailed instructions. This allows a designer to have a significant amount of control over what this generator spits out. However, it comes with a significant downside. The human brain has evolved to recognize patterns. We see patterns in faces, in art, in our habits, society, and in our everyday lives. Since the procedural generator creates content based on a designer-defined set of rules, it is subject to creating patterns. Players can often see through this pattern if it is implemented in a subpar manner. Therefore, it is a high priority for a designer to balance variation in content so the player is not able to spot patterns easily and structure and rules that the content created by a computer is subject to. This week, I had the dilemma of picking which map type to use for Project Younger Dice. Did I want it to be freeform or tile based? Did I want the movement to be restricted to the grid as well? Or did I want it to be more free and let the player not be restricted to a grid? First of all, I knew from the beginning that this will probably require me to learn about procedural generation and use that to generate the maps. However, I was confused about whether I wanted a tile system or not. After a lot of thinking, I went back and answered the same question that I had last week. What kind of game did I want to make? I wanted to make a game that was more analytical than reactive more relaxed than rushed, and more deliberate than careless. A tile-based game rang out as a clear answer, since it made the game more readable and provided more accurate information than its counterpart. However, this posed another potential problem. Throughout the design process, I have been comparing my game to Sid Meier's Civilization, and it is a good example of what I want to achieve, not in terms of scope or scale, but in terms of gameplay. However, making my game tile-based made me fear that by doing that I would be making my game quite similar to Civ, and it would slowly blend into the strategy genre and not stand out. This exposed another problem. I don't really know what the hook is for my game. I mean, partly it is a narrative that is relatively unique, but I don't think that's enough to get someone interested in the game. I need a mechanic that sets the game apart from the genre, so that I can get people interested in Project Young Adrias on at least two levels, the mechanics and the narrative. This is probably something I will work on next week. Right now, the hunter-gatherers simply move in the direction of the player and reorient themselves every three turns. I want to make this more realistic and interesting and to do that, I will make them move between water bodies such as riverbanks and food sources such as forests. Wild animals will stay in the forests and occasionally go out to drink water to riverbanks but they can attack hunter-gatherer colonies and whittle down their populations over time, if not saved by the player. These sort of emergent interactions would make the gameplay more fun and interesting in my opinion. Therefore, next week I will be focusing on developing a mechanical hook for my game, as well as implementing a tile-based system so that I can implement the AI behaviors I mentioned earlier. Hopefully this has been useful and my research helped you have a better understanding of the implications 
of different map types in strategy games. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. If you enjoy these devlogs, then please subscribe, it really helps a lot. If you would like a video on a specific topic, or if you have feedback, then please leave that in the comment section down below, and I will see you next week.